Walk by Faith Not by Sight Written and published by God Daily News In an era where smartphones didn't exist and communication was primarily face-to-face, a vital, relevant message was penned. You've likely heard the expression, walk by faith, not by sight, a principle deeply rooted in the scriptures, particularly 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. As you navigate through the often turbulent waters of life, you might wonder how this principle can practically be applied in today's fast-paced, high-tech, data-driven society. This discussion aims to demystify this concept, outlining a step-by-step guide on genuinely walking by faith with the help of biblical teachings. So, if you've ever felt like you're at the edge of a precipice, unsure about the next step, wondering if there's solid ground beneath or a gaping abyss, you'll find this exploration enlightening. Chapter 1. Understanding Walk by Faith Concept To truly grasp the concept of walk by faith, you must delve into the theological underpinnings of the phrase and its profound implications in the Christian life. This phrase, originating from 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, is a tenet of Christian belief that underscores the importance of faith in God's promises, plan, and providence, even when you can't see the outcome. It's about reliance on God rather than your own understanding or sight. Firstly, it's crucial to understand what faith means in a biblical sense. Hebrews 11 verse 1 provides an eloquent definition, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we don't see. Faith, in this context, isn't blind trust, but a confident expectation based on God's character and promises. Now, let's explore the walk metaphor. In biblical terms, walking often symbolizes the way of life or conduct. When you walk by faith, you're living your life in a way that trusts and depends on God, irrespective of life circumstances. It's a journey where you're guided not by physical sight or earthly wisdom, but by divine wisdom and trust in God's promises. However, walking by faith isn't synonymous with a trouble-free life. On the contrary, it often involves stepping into the unknown, confronting challenges, and persevering through trials. Yet, this journey of faith isn't solitary, it's accompanied by a divine companion who promises never to leave or forsake you. In essence, to walk by faith is to surrender control, embrace uncertainty, and trust God's sovereign plan, acknowledging that His ways and thoughts are higher than ours. It's a challenging, yet rewarding journey that deepens your relationship with God, cultivates resilience, and fosters spiritual growth. Chapter 2 Biblical Origin of Faith Not Sight Delving into the biblical origin of faith not sight, you'll find that this profound concept stems from the New Testament, specifically 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, which states, For we live by faith, not by sight. This verse serves as a significant cornerstone in Christian theology, embodying the very essence of spiritual belief. In its context, Paul the Apostle is addressing the Corinthian church, exhorting them to trust in God's promises, regardless of their current circumstances. He's encouraging a faith that perceives beyond the physical realm, a faith that isn't confined by what the human eyes can see. In essence, Paul is advocating for a faith that's grounded in the certainty of God's character and His promises, rather than the uncertainty of earthly experiences. Within the broader theological landscape, faith not sight underscores the transformative nature of faith. It moves beyond mere intellectual assent to a deep, abiding trust in God. This kind of faith enables believers to navigate life's storms with an anchored hope, even when their circumstances don't align with their expectations. Chapter 3 Deep Dive into 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 Let's take a closer look at 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, a verse that's both rich in its theological implications and profound in its practical applications for believers. For we live by faith, not by sight, a succinct declaration, yet one packed with deep spiritual meaning. To comprehend this verse fully, it's crucial to understand the Apostle Paul's context. He's writing to the Corinthian church, encouraging them to focus on the unseen eternal realities, not the seen temporal circumstances. Here, faith is more than belief, 
its total trust and reliance on God and His promises. It's choosing to navigate life by God's truth, even when our physical eyes can't see it. The sight Paul refers to isn't physical vision but the human tendency to rely on worldly wisdom and empirical evidence. By saying, not by sight, he challenges believers to resist the urge to live by earthly standards and to lean into a faith-centered life. This verse calls you to a faith walk, a journey where you trust God's word over your experiences, feelings, or perceptions. It's about confidence in His promises, despite what your circumstances may suggest. It's a call to spiritual maturity, requiring a shift from sensory-based faith to promise-based faith. Chapter 4 Practical Application of Faith Walking Embracing the practice of faith walking in your daily life presents a transformative way to live out the truth of 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, where faith becomes more than a spiritual concept, it becomes a practical, tangible way of navigating through life's challenges and uncertainties. The essence of faith walking isn't about negating reality or ignoring the struggles we face. Instead, it's about understanding that our earthly vision can be limiting and our human comprehension finite. As a faith walker, you're called to trust in God's divine providence, even in situations that seem insurmountable or bleak. You're not merely relying on empirical evidence or visible signs, but on the unfathomable wisdom of the Creator who transcends our finite understanding. This trust isn't passive but active, requiring courage and resilience. To practically apply faith walking, you firstly need to immerse yourself in the Word of God. The scriptures provide the foundation on which faith is built and strengthened. Meditate on biblical truths, absorb the promises of God, and let them infuse your thoughts and actions. Secondly, cultivate a prayerful life. Prayer is the heart's communication with God, an avenue to express your fears, hopes, and desires. It's in the intimacy of prayer that faith grows and deepens. Lastly, be vigilant against fear and doubt, the enemies of faith. Remember, faith isn't the absence of fear, but choosing to trust God despite the fear. As you walk by faith and not by sight, you'll discover a profound peace and assurance that stems from trusting in God's sovereignty. Chapter 5 Trusting God in Unseen Circumstances in the journey of faith walking, you'll often encounter circumstances shrouded in obscurity and uncertainty, demanding a deeper level of trust in God's unseen hand at work. This trust isn't blind faith but a confident expectation, rooted in the divine promises of God, who's eternally faithful and unchanging. God's sovereignty, a key theological concept, underscores that He governs all events in the universe, including those concealed from our human perspective. Romans 8 verse 28 assures us that God is orchestrating all things, even the invisible and seemingly chaotic, for our good and His glory. Here, the Apostle Paul doesn't promise a life devoid of suffering or hardship, but rather a life infused with purpose, even amidst unseen circumstances. To trust God in unseen circumstances, you must cultivate a deep relationship with Him, immersing yourself in Scripture, prayer, and fellowship with other believers. As you grow in your understanding of God's character and promises, your trust will deepen, enabling you to walk by faith, not by sight, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. This isn't a passive acceptance of circumstances but an active commitment to God's will, regardless of how inscrutable it may seem. Trust, in essence, involves surrendering control and acknowledging God's supreme authority. It's a spiritual discipline, nurtured over time, requiring patience and persistence. In unseen circumstances, remember that God's ways aren't our ways, Isaiah 55 verses 8 to 9. Though you may not see the full picture, rest assured that God is at work, weaving a tapestry of grace and redemption, one unseen thread at a time. Chapter 6 Overcoming the Need for Sight Overcoming the innate human desire for tangible evidence or sight requires a conscious shift towards a spiritual perspective rooted in faith. It's a challenging feat, but you're not alone in this journey. The Bible, in its wisdom and depth, provides guidance for this transition. Firstly, you need to understand what sight symbolizes in this context. 
It represents our human tendency to rely on empirical evidence, the things we can touch, see, or measure. It's an inherent part of our nature, but it can become a stumbling block in our spiritual growth. Hebrews 11 verse 1 describes faith as, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, faith isn't about discarding reason, but it's about transcending the limits of physical sight and embracing the unseen spiritual reality. Paul, in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, encourages us to, walk by faith, not by sight. Here, sight refers not just to physical vision but also to our human understanding. Walking by faith means trusting in God's promises, even when circumstances seem contrary. It's about letting go of the need for control and surrendering to God's providence. Chapter 7 Steps to Cultivate Faith To cultivate a robust faith, you must commit to a consistent regimen of spiritual disciplines, which can guide your heart and mind towards a deeper understanding and trust in God's promises. This journey involves several key steps. Firstly, immerse yourself in God's Word regularly. The Bible is the fundamental source of truth concerning God's nature and promises. By reading and reflecting on the Scriptures on a regular basis, you are laying a spiritual foundation on solid rock rather than shifting sand. You'll gain insights that can fortify your faith when trials come. Secondly, prayer is a critical discipline in cultivating faith. Prayer isn't just about asking for things, but it's an intimate communication with the Creator. It allows you to communicate your feelings, desires, and anxieties while also listening for God's voice. Persistence in prayer cultivates trust and dependence on God. Next, seek fellowship with other believers. The Christian faith isn't meant to be lived in isolation. Together, you can encourage, challenge, and support one another. It's within this community that faith is often tested and strengthened. Lastly, serve others selflessly. Jesus exemplified service, and following his example develops humility and compassion, essential traits of a mature faith. Chapter 8 Jesus, a model of faith walking. Having examined the essential disciplines for nurturing our faith, let's now consider the life of Jesus Christ, the ultimate exemplar of walking by faith and not by sight. Jesus' life was a testament to unwavering faith and complete trust in God's promises, even in the face of seemingly insurmountable challenges. Jesus demonstrated faith in action, not merely in words. He healed the sick, raised the dead, and performed miracles, not because of his own power, but because of his complete reliance on and trust in God's power. You can see this in John 11 verses 41 to 42, where Jesus thanked God ahead of raising Lazarus from the dead, showing his confidence in God's power. Moreover, Jesus faced the ultimate test of faith, the crucifixion. Even in this dire situation, his trust in God didn't waver. He surrendered his will to God's, showcasing a profound example of faith in God's plan, as evidenced in Luke 22 verse 42. In Jesus, we see a model of faith that transcends understanding and sight. He offers an example of faith that's active, sacrificial, and resilient, and that trusts in God's promises, even when circumstances seem unfavorable. Chapter 9 The Role of Prayer in Faith Walking In your journey of faith walking, prayer serves as a crucial spiritual discipline, anchoring your trust in God's promises amidst life's uncertainties. As you navigate the path of faith, prayer becomes your intimate communication with God, a space where you express your deepest desires, fears, and hopes. Prayer is reflective of our dependence on God. It's a humble acknowledgement that we're not self-sufficient beings, that we're reliant on a higher power for guidance and sustenance. In essence, prayer is an act of surrender, a declaration that we trust God's wisdom above our limited understanding. Moreover, Prayer cultivates a posture of faith. When you commit your concerns, anxieties, and dreams to God in prayer, you're essentially walking by faith and not by sight. You're choosing to believe in God's ability to act in your circumstances, even when you can't see the outcome. In this way, prayer aligns your will with God's, 
enabling you to walk in alignment with His divine purposes. Additionally, prayer serves as a source of spiritual strength in your faith walk. The act of prayer fosters an intimate relationship with God, and this relationship fortifies your faith. As you regularly converse with God, you're drawn into a deeper understanding of His character and promises. This understanding fuels your faith, equipping you to persevere through trials and tribulations. Chapter 10 Biblical Heroes Who Walked by Faith Throughout the Bible, you'll find compelling stories of individuals whose lives exemplify a profound walk of faith, demonstrating trust in God's promises despite daunting circumstances. These heroes aren't just historical figures, but models for us, showing us the essence of walking by faith. Abraham, for instance, when called by God, obeyed and set out for a place he was to receive as an inheritance, not knowing where he was going. This act, as described in Hebrews 11 verse 8, is a clear example of faith walking. Abraham's trust in God's promise was paramount, even when the fulfillment of such promise appeared impossible. Noah, another biblical hero, epitomizes faith in action. Warned about events not yet seen, he heeded God's instruction to construct an ark in anticipation of a deluge. His faith is evidenced in his obedience, as recounted in Hebrews 11 verse 7. His faith saved his household and condemned the world, showing faith's impact and value. Another example is Moses, who decided to suffer with God's people rather than enjoy the transient joys of sin. He esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward, as recorded in Hebrews 11 verse 26. His faith was manifest in his choices, reflecting a heart fixed on God. These biblical heroes, and many others, walked by faith, not by sight. Their stories remind you that faith involves active trust in God's promises, even when the path appears uncertain. Their faith encapsulates the essence of living the Christian life, inspiring us to do the same. Chapter 11 Navigating Doubt and Fear Yet, even as we draw inspiration from these biblical heroes who walked by faith, it's crucial to acknowledge the reality of doubt and fear that often challenge our spiritual journey. These emotional responses, although uncomfortable, aren't incompatible with a life of faith, rather, they're integral components of our spiritual maturation. In the face of doubt, you're invited to engage with the biblical text, to wrestle with its complexities, and to seek understanding. The Psalms, for instance, are filled with expressions of doubt and pleas for clarity, demonstrating that doubt isn't a spiritual dead end, but a path to deeper belief. As you grapple with these uncertainties, remember Proverbs 2 verses 3 to 5, which encourages us to call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding. Fear, too, is a common biblical theme. It's natural to fear the unknown, question the future, and feel overwhelmed by the enormity of God's plans. But the Bible provides reassurance in Isaiah 41 verse 10, So don't fear, for I'm with you, don't be dismayed, for I'm your God. By turning to God in our fear, we learn to trust in His sovereignty. Navigating doubt and fear isn't about obliterating these emotions, but about learning to walk by faith amid them. It's about grounding yourself in God's Word, seeking His wisdom, and surrendering your fears to Him. In doing so, you're not just walking by faith, you're also growing, maturing, and deepening your relationship with God. Chapter 12 Strengthening Faith Through Worship Engaging in worship, you can find a powerful tool to fortify your faith, drawing closer to God through praise, prayer, and communion with fellow believers. Worship isn't merely a religious obligation, but a spiritual discipline that nurtures your faith, making it robust and resilient. The act of worship creates a sacred space where you can encounter God in a profound way. In worship, you're not just expressing your love for God, you're also receiving His love, grace, and truth. This divine exchange can strengthen your faith, transforming your perspective and empowering you to walk by faith, not by sight. The Bible underscores the importance of worship and faith building. In John 4 verse 24, Jesus declares, God is spirit, 
and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Here, Christ is emphasizing that true worship goes beyond rituals and routines. It's a heartfelt expression of love, reverence, and dependence on God. This intimate connection with God results in a deeper faith. Furthermore, shared worship in a community of believers provides reinforcement for your faith. In Hebrews 10 verses 24 to 25, we're encouraged not to neglect meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but to encourage one another. When you worship with others, you're buoyed by their faith, and together, you create a powerful chorus of praise that lifts each person's spirit and faith. Chapter 13 Role of the Holy Spirit in Faith Walking In your journey of faith, the Holy Spirit plays an indispensable role, guiding, empowering, and equipping you to confidently walk by faith and not by sight. The Holy Spirit isn't a distant entity but a personal presence that resides within you, as affirmed in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19. He serves as your spiritual compass, leading you towards God's will and away from paths of destruction. The Holy Spirit also empowers you to exercise faith. He imparts spiritual gifts, as outlined in 1 Corinthians 12, to strengthen and fortify your faith. You're not left to walk this journey alone, He equips you with the power to overcome trials, resist temptations, and stand firm in your faith even when you can't see the way ahead. Moreover, the Holy Spirit illuminates your understanding of God's Word. John 14 verse 26 reveals that the Holy Spirit, being the Spirit of truth, teaches us all things and reminds us of everything Jesus has said. He's your divine instructor, unveiling the deep truths of the Scriptures, enhancing your discernment, and fostering your spiritual growth. Lastly, the Holy Spirit cultivates within you the fruits of the Spirit as depicted in Galatians 5 verses 22-23. These virtues, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are critical in your walk of faith. They shape your character to resemble that of Christ and influence your interactions with others. In essence, the Holy Spirit is pivotal to your faith walk. He's your guide, your power source, your teacher, and your character builder equipping, empowering, and enabling you to walk by faith, not by sight. Chapter 14 Lessons from the Book of Hebrews Diving into the profound teachings of the Book of Hebrews, you'll uncover a wealth of wisdom and lessons that are essential for a robust and thriving faith walk. This epistle, addressed to Jewish Christians, unfolds the supremacy and sufficiency of Christ, serving as a reminder of the grandeur of the faith you're called to walk in. Hebrews 11, often termed the Hall of Faith, provides a vivid depiction of faith in action. Here, you'll find men and women who, despite their imperfections, chose to walk by faith and not by sight. They weren't swayed by their circumstances but held fast to the promises of God, illuminating the path for us to do the same. The author of Hebrews also emphasizes Christ's high priestly role. Here, you're reminded that Jesus, your high priest, has ascended into heaven, granting you direct access to God's throne of grace. He invites you, in your times of need, to approach this throne with confidence, assured of His mercy and grace, Hebrews 4 verse 16. This is a crucial aspect of your faith walk, as it embodies complete reliance on God's provision, not your own abilities. Lastly, Hebrews challenges you to persevere, holding on to faith and hope as an anchor for the soul, Hebrews 6 verse 19. In this journey of faith, trials and tribulations are inevitable. Yet, you're encouraged to stay the course, steadfast in your faith, knowing that your hope in Christ is secure and unshakable. In summary, the book of Hebrews provides priceless lessons in trust, hope, and endurance, strengthening your determination to walk by faith rather than sight. Chapter 15 Faith Walking in Everyday Life How does one practically live out the concept of walking by faith in the hustle and bustle of everyday life? It might seem like a daunting task, but it's simpler than you'd think. Remember, faith isn't just about the big, life-changing moments. It's about the small, everyday decisions too. Firstly, 
let's understand what it means to walk by faith. It's adopting a mindset that trusts in God's promise, even when the circumstances don't seem to align. It's about seeing through the lens of Scripture and not our subjective perspectives. To walk by faith is to be guided by God's Word in every aspect of life, from the mundane to the monumental. It starts with prayer. Rather than starting your day with worries, begin it by praying and reading God's Word. This places your focus on God, helping you to recognize His influence throughout your day. Next, be mindful of your decisions. Each choice you make should reflect your faith in God's wisdom above your own. When faced with dilemmas, ask, what would align with God's word? Then, cultivate gratitude. Instead of dwelling on what's wrong, focus on God's blessings. This fosters an attitude of trust, reminding you of His faithfulness. Finally, serve others. Walking by faith involves being God's hands and feet in the world. Look for opportunities to demonstrate His love in your daily interactions. In essence, walking by faith in everyday life involves a shift in focus. It's about living with an eternal perspective, making decisions grounded in faith, and serving as a reflection of God's love. Chapter 16 Faith versus Sight, The Differences When you compare faith and sight, you'll find they're not just different, but often at odds, presenting contrasting approaches to how we navigate our world. Sight is tangible, immediate, and temporal. It's governed by the physical world, restricted to what can be observed and verified. When you walk by sight, you're relying on the material facts before you, often discounting any aspect that doesn't fit into your sensory perception. On the other hand, faith is intangible, timeless, and spiritual. It's not confined by the physical and doesn't require physical evidence. When you walk by faith, you're trusting in the unseen, the unprovable, the divine. It's a conviction not based on what your eyes can see, but on what your heart can feel and your spirit can discern. In the biblical context, sight represents human understanding, while faith represents divine revelation. The Apostle Paul, in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, encourages us to walk by faith, not by sight, suggesting that our spiritual journey should be guided more by divine insight than by human reasoning. Chapter 17 Embracing Uncertainty with Faith In life's journey, embracing uncertainty with faith isn't merely a test of your spiritual strength, it's a testament to your unwavering trust in God's divine plan. You're called to surrender control and fear, exchanging them for trust and hope. This act of faith aligns you with biblical teachings, such as Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, which implores you to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Embracing uncertainty requires a deep understanding of the nature of faith. Hebrews 11 verse 1 defines faith as, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's an acceptance of God's unseen realities, a commitment to hold fast to His promises despite the lack of tangible proof. But how can you embrace uncertainty with faith? It's a process that involves constant prayer, study of the scriptures, and spiritual growth. You must immerse yourself in God's Word, allowing it to shape your thoughts and perceptions. It's in this manner that you cultivate a resilient faith, capable of withstanding life's unpredictable storms. Chapter 18 Faith Walking and Personal Growth Continually walking in faith triggers profound personal growth, enhancing your spiritual maturity and deepening your understanding of God's Word. This faith walk isn't a static endeavor, but an ongoing journey, where each step forward hones your character and brings you closer to God's divine truth. As Paul taught in Philippians 1 verse 6, God continues His good work in you until it reaches completion. Faith walking requires both patience and perseverance. You'll face challenges, but these are opportunities for growth, pushing you to seek God's wisdom. James 1 verses 2 to 4 tells us to consider trials as pure joy, knowing they produce perseverance, leading to maturity and completeness. God doesn't promise an easy path, but He affirms His constant presence and guidance. Your faith walk also encourages humility 
a trait integral to personal growth. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 advises you to trust in the Lord and not rely on your own understanding. This humility fosters a teachable spirit, allowing God's word to shape your thoughts and actions. As you yield control to God, you'll find the growth that comes with surrender. Lastly, walking in faith cultivates love, the greatest of all virtues, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13. It's through love for God and others that you truly grow. This love isn't mere sentimentality but a sacrificial, Christ-like love, demonstrated in action. Chapter 19 Stories of Modern-Day Faith Walkers Let's delve into the lives of contemporary believers whose faith walks serve as inspiring testimonies to God's enduring presence and transformative power. Consider the story of a woman named Grace, a single mother who was diagnosed with a terminal illness. Despite her circumstances, she refused to be moved by what she saw and felt physically. Instead, she walked by faith, holding steadfastly to God's promises of healing in scriptures like Isaiah 53 verse 5. She spent her days in prayer and Bible study, trusting God for a miracle. Miraculously, her condition improved and eventually, she was declared cancer-free. Then there's Dan, a man who lost his job and was on the verge of homelessness. Rather than succumbing to despair, Dan chose to walk by faith, recalling God's promise in Matthew 6 verses 31 to 34. Instead of worrying, he intensified his job search, volunteered at a local church, and trusted God for provision. Within a month, he found a stable job, demonstrating the truth of Philippians 4 verse 19, that God will supply all our needs. And let's not forget Sarah, a missionary in a hostile region. Despite the risks and challenges, she walked by faith, clinging to God's promise of protection in Psalm 91. Her work has led to the conversion of many, showcasing the power of faith to overcome fear and adversity. These modern-day faith walkers remind us that walking by faith is a transformative journey, not a destination. It's about trusting God's promises, regardless of circumstances, and allowing His power to work through us, even in the face of adversity. Chapter 20 Faith Walking in Times of Crisis Drawing lessons from these contemporary faith walkers, it becomes evident that faith is most palpably exercised and tested during periods of crisis. When the waves of life are turbulent, you're called to walk by faith, not by sight. In times of crisis, the biblical narrative of Peter walking on water in Matthew 14 verses 29 to 31 provides an instructive example. Peter, amid a storm, stepped out of the boat onto the waves because he believed in Jesus' word. Yet, when he let his gaze wander from Jesus to the storm, fear struck, and he began to sink. It was at this moment that Peter's faith was tested, and he cried out to Jesus for help. Jesus immediately reached out and caught him, rebuking his lack of faith. Much like Peter, you're likely to face storms in life, situations where the future seems uncertain and fears loom large. But remember, it's in these storms where faith is honed. You're asked to keep your eyes on Jesus, to trust his word rather than the threatening waves. In Hebrews 11 verse 1, faith is described as, the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. This implies a confident reliance on God's promises, even when circumstances seem contrary. So, during crises, don't let fear dictate your actions. Instead, let faith guide your steps. Chapter 21 Faith-Based Decision-Making In the daily grind of life, faith-based decision-making emerges as a critical spiritual discipline, requiring you to actively trust in God's wisdom and providence, even when tangible evidence may not be immediately apparent. This isn't a call to abandon reason or ignore facts, but rather an invitation to incorporate divine wisdom into your decision-making process, acknowledging the limitations of human understanding. Faith-based decisions are rooted in biblical teachings, specifically Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, which instructs you to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your path straight. This passage underscores the importance of relinquishing control, seeking divine guidance, 
and trusting in God's sovereignty. Making decisions guided by faith isn't always easy, it demands courage, patience, and humility. However, it's a transformative process that refines your character, deepens your relationship with God, and enables you to experience His providence in profound ways. It encourages you to surrender your worries and anxieties, and instead, seek God's peace that surpasses all understanding, Philippians 4 verse 7. In essence, faith-based decision-making is a spiritual journey that cultivates trust, obedience, and dependence on God. It's not a guarantee against challenges or disappointments, but it promises divine guidance, peace, and ultimate good for those who love God, Romans 8 verse 28. Chapter 22 Sustaining Faith in Tough Times While walking by faith provides guidance in decision-making, it also serves as a beacon during life's most challenging periods, urging you to sustain your faith even when faced with adversity. The trials you encounter aren't designed to shatter your faith, but to strengthen it, encouraging you to trust in God's promises even when circumstances seem bleak. The Apostle Paul, in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, affirms, For we live by faith, not by sight. Here, Paul illustrates the Christian's unique perspective, we're not controlled by visible circumstances but sustained by the invisible truths of God's Word. Yet, it's not uncommon to question your faith during tough times. You may feel overwhelmed, fearful, or even abandoned. But remember, God's faithfulness doesn't fluctuate with our feelings or circumstances. Consider the account of Job, a man who, despite profound suffering, maintained his faith. Job's story offers a profound lesson, steadfast faith doesn't deny pain or hardship but holds onto God's character and promises amidst them. Job could declare, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, Job 13 verse 15. In essence, sustaining faith in difficult times involves a conscious choice to trust God despite what you see or feel. It's about acknowledging your limitations, yet believing in God's limitless power. It's about choosing to focus on God's unchanging nature in the face of changing circumstances. It's not an easy walk, but remember, you're not alone. The same God who guided the heroes of faith will guide and sustain you in your journey. Keep walking by faith, not by sight. Chapter 23 The Rewards of Walking by Faith Embracing a life steered by faith, not sight, opens up a wealth of spiritual rewards that can transform your existence. This journey of faith, although occasionally shrouded in mystery, ultimately leads to a profound sense of peace, purpose, and divine fulfillment. When you choose to walk by faith, you're essentially entrusting your life to God's divine plan. This act of surrender not only fosters a deeper reliance on God but also cultivates an intimate relationship with Him. You'll begin to see trials as opportunities for growth and challenges as stepping stones to spiritual maturity. Moreover, a faith-driven life offers the reward of divine assurance. Hebrews 11 verse 1 describes faith as the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. This means that, even in the face of uncertainty, you can rest in the assurance that God's promises will come to pass. Walking by faith also ushers in the reward of divine sustenance. As you lean on God's promises, you'll be nourished and sustained, even in the most trying times. This is beautifully illustrated in Isaiah 40 verse 31, which promises that those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength and soar on wings like eagles. Lastly, choosing to walk by faith yields the ultimate reward of eternal life. John 3 verse 16 reminds us that whoever believes in Jesus won't perish but have eternal life. In essence, walking by faith isn't just about navigating the challenges of this life, it's about securing your eternal destiny. These rewards, among others, await you when you choose to walk by faith. Chapter 24 Faith Walking and Spiritual Warfare As you embark on this faith-driven journey, it's pivotal to understand that this path also engages you in spiritual warfare, a battle between the divine truth you've chosen to believe and the worldly distractions seeking to undermine it. The Apostle Paul, in Ephesians 6 verse 12, underscores this reality by stating, 
For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. In this spiritual warfare, your faith walk becomes your shield. It's a protective measure, an affirmation of your allegiance to God's sovereignty, amidst the relentless onslaught of the enemy's deceitful tactics. As delineated in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4, the weapons we fight with aren't the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they've divine power to demolish strongholds. However, it's crucial to remember that this spiritual warfare isn't won solely by your own strength. It's won by the power of God working within you, through your faith in Him. This idea is substantiated in 1 John 4 verse 4, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who's in you is greater than the one who's in the world. Therefore, as you tread this journey, don't neglect the armor of faith that fortifies you against the spiritual battles that seek to derail your divine calling. Stand steadfast in the truth of God's word, and walk by faith rather than sight. Through this, you'll not only endure but emerge victorious in the spiritual warfare that lies ahead. Chapter 25 Personal Reflections on Walking by Faith Navigating your personal journey of faith, you'll find that it's the everyday choices, marked by trust in God's divine guidance, that truly define what it means to walk by faith and not by sight. This path isn't an easy one, it requires an unwavering commitment to listen to God's whispers in the quiet of your heart and to act in accordance with His will, even when it doesn't align with your personal desires or human understanding. Walking by faith means making decisions that mightn't make sense from a worldly perspective. It's choosing to follow God's leading, even when you can't see the road ahead. It's trusting that God, in His infinite wisdom and love, is guiding your steps towards His perfect plan for your life. Take Abraham, for instance. He was called by God to leave his homeland and venture into the unknown, Genesis 12. Despite not knowing where he was going, Abraham obeyed because he trusted God and his promise. Similarly, you're called to place your faith in God's promises, even in times of uncertainty. Reflecting on your personal experiences, you'll realize that moments of faith are often intertwined with courage and obedience. These moments, however, aren't about your strength or wisdom. Instead, they're about your reliance on God, your trust in His divine providence, and your willingness to step out in faith, even when you can't see the end of the road. In the grand tapestry of life, faith is our golden thread, guiding us through the labyrinth of uncertainty. Embrace the journey of walking by faith, not by sight. Let your faith be your beacon in troubled times, your shield in spiritual warfare, and your compass in unseen circumstances. Remember, each step taken in faith brings you closer to divine fulfillment. The rewards are plentiful, as is the profound growth nurtured within. Let faith be your guide. Thanks for listening.